Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com. In this video, you're going to learn how to optimize your product data and your product feed in your Google Merchant Center Next account. Not optimizing your product data and your product feed is one of the biggest mistakes I see store owners making. Not doing this holds you back from so many more sales and so much more in profit. Now, why are we optimizing our product feed and our product data in our Google Merchant Center Next account? Google uses your product feed and your product data to understand your products and who to show them to with your Google Shopping campaigns and your Performance Max campaigns. Most store owners just create the feed, but they don't know that they can optimize this further and get much better results. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a store that sells scented candles. It has a minimalist design with short and emotive titles. Something like Sunset Beach Vibes. We see this all the time and it can work great on your website, your product page, working with its aesthetics. However, Sunset Beach Vibes as a product title is not optimized. People looking for candles are not searching for that on Google. So you'll want to revise this product title in Google Merchant Center Next to include more relevant keywords, such as scented candle, maybe it's color, and maybe it's burning time, it's wax time, or maybe even features such as long lasting and so on. In this video here, you're going to learn all the attributes that can be edited. I'm going to give you the most important optimization tactics on the crucial ones. If I cover anything too quickly, don't worry. I've also created a full handbook on how to optimize your product feed. This takes you through everything in this video in even more detail. I'll leave a link to download that handbook down below. All right, let's get into our Google Merchant Center Next account and start optimizing our product feed and our product data. Let's go. In the products section, which we'll get to by clicking products on the left menu, you will now see a list of your products in Merchant Center. Clicking on one brings us to its product details page where we can review the data Google is working with. For what we want to do, you'll click this button to edit product. As a reminder, changes that we make here do not affect the data on your website. If you change the product title here, your ads will use this one, but will still go to your stores page and show the original title. Okay, let's run through each of these attributes one by one. This is the product page link, pretty self-explanatory. I recommend you don't change it. Now, here's the product title. This is an attribute I do recommend you consider for revising. You want to think like a shopper here and put the keywords that best describe your product. That's, of course, its product type, such as scented candle, to reuse my previous example, but also keywords that narrow down from a broad product category to more specific. With the candle example, that might be what it smells like, or if it's made with beeswax or organic beeswax. You see how these keywords are search terms that shoppers may use. Therefore, you want Google to consider your product highly relevant to them. Now, don't overdo this. You don't want to keyword stuff your title. You see this when shopping on Amazon quite often with long word salad titles. You want to be specific and descriptive, that's it. Okay, moving on to the brand attribute. If you're selling your own stuff, this will be your store's name or the specific brand you've assigned to the product. If you're reselling a major brand, let's say a Timex watch, then you'll then want to put your brand in here. Next is the description. Whatever description is pulled from your website is usually fine from my experience. Google doesn't heavily weight the keywords in the description for relevancy to the shopper's searches. This doesn't need to be perfect, so don't overthink the optimization here. Just keep it free from promotional text, such as free shipping or buy one, get one free or anything like that as it's against Google's policy. Let's scroll down to product images. For optimization, Google offers a generative AI tool to help you spruce up your images. I'm going to leave that outside the scope of this video. To be honest, it hasn't been wildly useful to my team and I so far. Let's keep going. Next is product type. This is for your own organization, not Google's. It's useful for when you're creating product groups based on the product type. Moving on to condition, this is simply where you can identify if your product is refurbished or used. Otherwise, Google assumes a default of new. Now, for price, currency, availability, sales price, and sales date range, I suggest that you change these at the data source. That means if your data source is your Shopify store, change these details there, not here. Google checks these attributes regularly each day. A discrepancy can get your product disapproved quickly. I've never seen a situation where it's better to change these attributes directly in Merchant Center. The next section covers product identifiers. This is where many common mistakes happen, so please pay close attention here. This section will save you from future headaches. The ID or SKU is the unique identifier for this product. 
for Google. If you've successfully imported your feed from Shopify, this should already be filled in. Do not overwrite it. Doing so would create a new product for Google. They will forget all the data history it collected for the original one. My team and I have seen entire catalogs have their IDs accidentally revised and the campaign performance plummeted immediately after. The next field is for your product's GTIN or Global Trade Item Number. This can have several other acronyms such as UPC, EAN or ISBN. Basically, it's the internationally recognized ID for your product. You know the barcode that gets scanned at checkout? It's that. Your product might not have one, and that's okay. We'll cover that in the next few seconds. But if your product does have a GTIN code, this is where you want to enter it. One of the most common warnings that Google has for products is a missing GTIN. This is because when Google believes that a product has one, it wants to be absolutely sure because a product with a GTIN is likely not only being sold by you, but by other sellers online too. If Google can identify all these products as the same one, it can better optimize your ads. This is because it uses the data history of how all the other sellers have performed with this same product. This is why it presses so hard for an accurate GTIN here. However, not all products have GTINs. You may have a one-of-a-kind or vintage product with no identifier or you can assign an MPN, manufacturer part number. If your product isn't a one of a kind, then it's crucial that you have an NPN. Make up one if you have to, that's totally fine. Just keep it unique within your catalog. This lets Google know that this product can be purchased multiple times. That's important because Google will start learning about how the product performs with your shopping audience. If it's a one of a kind item, Google won't bother trying to learn anything about the performance of this one product because there's no point. We've seen so many store sellers make this mistake. In turn, they lose out on Google's smart optimization because they miss this. Okay, the next three sections are language, countries, and marketing methods. The attributes aren't editable at a product level. Google displays them here just for reference, so let's skip over to custom labels. These labels are not visible to shoppers on Google. They're simply used by you, the advertiser, for your own purposes. The most common and useful way to use these is for product segmentation. This is useful for a few things, like if you want to label all your high margin products, your best sellers, or your high ticket items. Then when you set up your campaign, you can organize all your products according to these labels. It's very useful. I cover this more deeply in the campaign setup lessons in both of our Google Shopping Ads course and our Performance Max course. Both are free. I'll leave a link down below to each one. All right, let's review the next section, which is called apparel product details. It's called that because these attributes are mandatory if your product is apparel. However, even if your product isn't apparel, I strongly suggest that you put in relevant information here. For example, if you're selling a couch, then color, size, material, and pattern are all attributes that people filter by when couch shopping. Or if you're selling a kid's bike designed for girls, then gender and age group make sense to put in. Let's run through each of these attributes. For color, choose the dominant color. If there's a second color, add a slash and then add that color as well. If there's a third color, add another slash and add a third color. Stop adding colors after that. Google only wants the three most dominant colors. If your product has a bunch of colors and none are dominant, simply enter multicolored. And as a recommendation, keep your color name simple. Instead of dusty ash, just say gray. Instead of blushing rose, just use pink. This ensures that you can be properly filtered by color on Google. For size, also keep it simple. Use S for small, M for medium, and so on. For example, for shoe size, use 11.5 for 11 and a half. For non-apparel items, it gets a little less intuitive. So my team has written up a guide that I'll share with you. It helps understand the best formats to use here when size is an important attribute for your product. The link is down below this video. Go and check it out. The size type attribute is specific to apparel only. It refers to the cut, whether it's petite, plus size, regular, or tall, and so on. The size system is also just for apparel. Because different countries have different systems of indicating size measurements, this is where you can ensure Google gets it right. Next is gender. If your product isn't targeted towards a gender, just keep this on the default of unisex. Material works like the color attribute. Input the dominant material, then secondary and third as necessary. Pattern is not a mandatory attribute, but if your product has a pattern, then this is the place to indicate it. 
Age group is self-explanatory since Google knows the age ranges in the selection fields. In the additional product details section, I'm going to cover five of these attributes. The last four are very particular to only a few types of products. The first one here is whether the product is adult oriented. It's very different from setting the age group to adult. Google allows for the advertising of adult oriented products in most countries, but it strictly demands that they be categorized as such. The next is multi-pack. Multi-pack means that you've taken two or more of the same item that is available in your store and combined them in one package. For example, let's say you sell t-shirts. You can sell them individually on your store, but you can also create a package of two t-shirts. In this case, you would put in the number two for this multi-pack product. This is different from creating a bundle, which is the next attribute. Checking this would indicate to Google that this product is a package of two or more different items packaged into a bundle. Next is item group ID. Let's say you're selling a t-shirt and it comes in different sizes and colors. The t-shirt itself is considered one product and each available size or color is called a variation. So if this item is one of those variations, item group ID is how you identify the product it belongs to. This ID must be unique to that product and remain the same for all its variants. The final attribute I want to cover in this section is product highlight. Small store owners do not make enough use of this attribute in product data. Let's say you make and sell quilts and the material that you use is all organic. This is where you would share that as a product highlight. It will help Google know that when shoppers specifically look for organic or sustainable bedding, that this product is relevant to advertise. Every product has at least three or four highlights like this that can be called out. It just takes a bit of time and thought on your part. See below for a link to product highlights for various products that may help you in writing these. These are the small details that bring incremental advantages when you're competing against major online stores that have much bigger budgets. Okay, the rest of the attributes are pretty clear in what Google requires. If you have any questions about them or even want a deeper dive on product attributes, then please let us know in the comments below. That's how we optimize our product data and our product feed in Google Merchant Center next. Now that you've done this, go and check out our free Google Shopping course. It shows you everything you need to set up, optimize, and scale your Google Shopping campaigns to over 100K per month. It's completely free. It's on our website. I'll leave a link down below. Also, if you're already generating 20K per month in sales or more with your e-commerce store and you want to scale to seven figures and beyond, book a time with my team and I. We help e-commerce stores scale with Google Ads, Facebook Ads, and conversion rate optimization. I'll leave a link to our calendar down below. Book a time and let's talk about how we can scale your e-commerce store. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Make sure to click here for the next video in the free course, and I'll see you there.